Hey guys, welcome back to Coffee and Cartridges. Today we're going to talk about shooting groups and kind of some of the controversy that's been talked about recently on YouTube about shooting groups. So stay tuned. All right, so recently a couple YouTube channels have come out with videos about shooting groups. So Hornady has a podcast and in one of their podcasts, they, they talked about dis group dispersion. So their, their basic point was maybe you've shot three shot groups, five shot groups and got, you know, quarter minute of angle, half minute of angle and decided that your gun was quarter minute of angle gun with that load but in reality they don't think it really is you have to shoot more groups you have to repeat it and so they used the example that in their facilities you know they have access to you know lots of custom rifles and a system where they can put the gun in a rest and shoot it they can also shoot it offhand of course and they have, of course, access to basically infinite number of ammo to shoot. And they've done lots of testing to see how big a group size can get. And, you know, they have, have all the data that, you, that they showed you on the podcast. And they basically explained that you really need to shoot like a 20-shot group to get a better idea of the group size. Because the sample size of a three- or five-shot group really doesn't tell the story. And there's so much more variables and basically a 20 shot group is going to tell the story of what your gun is going to do. And they've shot 50 shot groups and hundred shot groups. And they, and basically the dispersion, which is how big the group is, will get bigger with, with three, five, 10, 20, 50, hundred shot groups. At some point it will stop and you're not really going to, get much bigger of a group but to just shoot a three shot group you don't really know <clears throat> and there was another controversial statement on that podcast where one of the gentlemen said he doesn't worry about seating depth it has no effect whatsoever in his testing he's not seen any um issues he's, he's not seen any difference on seating depth and so this raised some controversy um Especially it seemed like with the F-class shooters. A lot of the F-class shooters, you know, are some of the best precision shooters in the world. And they had immediate problems with what Hornady said. And so one prominent F-class shooter who has a YouTube channel, Eric Cortana, he brought one of the guys on, the lead ballistician from Hornady, on his podcast to talk about it. It's actually a pretty interesting podcast. They kind of go back and forth a little bit, kind of borders on, are they going to get mad at each other? But it really doesn't. Um, and he challenged the, the Hornady ballistician on some of this stuff. He said, basically, he basically said, you know, this is our life. We do this all the time. We're world champions. We've shot all over the world and we definitely can get, quarter minute of angle groups um, and we definitely see a definite difference when it comes to seating depth. So it's really an interesting concept and it just got me thinking, you know, what is that, like what's the answer, what does it mean and what, how does it apply to just the layman like me and you probably that just hunt or shoot for fun. So first of all, let me just tell you, at the end of that podcast, they kind of come together and realize that they really were saying kind of the same things, but just differently. However, they did end the podcast with disagreeing about a few things, mainly the seating depth. I feel like both sides had good points and portrayed themselves well. Um, the ballistician from Hornady, I think laid his case out very well and made it clear he's not saying that they have all the answers or that they know in concrete these things. He's just saying this is what our test results were. 
take it or leave it. And just, you know, be aware that I believe their test results were definitely valid. They were in a controlled place with as many variables taken out as possible. And they collected all the data and it's very relevant inf uh, information. So I have no issues with really anything that they said, but Eric Cortana is coming at it from a more practical standpoint. And he's like, first of all, no one is gonna go shoot 50 or 100 shot groups. <laughs> we don't have that kind of money. We're not gonna waste that much powder, that many primers to just see what our dispersion is, which was a good point. And he made the case that whether it's F-Class or Bentress, they literally make a living on changing seating depths and it does affect accuracy. But what the Hornady guy said was, look, we're, we're not saying that that doesn't happen. We're just saying in our testing, we didn't see a difference when we changed the seating depth. So pretty interesting. Um, and one more thing from that podcast I'll say is Eric Cortana, who's part of the uh, U.S. national team, he shoots for Lapua and um, Berger and all these things. He basically, and he's won, he's won championships, he, but he did make a really interesting comment. He said, there is flyers. And he said, I've shot thousands and thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of rounds. And every variable is taken out that I have any control over whatsoever when it comes to the, the platform, the gun, the components, the loading, everything, and we'll still get flyers. Like it happens. You know, there's just no way around it that there is the potential of a flyer happening. It's going to happen. I said that was the last thing from the podcast, but one more thing. Eric asked the ballistician, what is, how does this apply to hunters? Because a hunter doesn't need 10 shots like an F class or let alone 20, 50 or 100 shots. They're just trying to make one shot in the vital zone of an animal and take it down. So why would they want to shoot a 20 shot group? And I thought the lead ballistician at Hornady had a good answer. He said, in that case, just shoot three shots or five shots, you know, in a certain condition that you're gonna be hunting in and then let it cool down or whatever the case, and then go back to those same conditions and shoot another three shot group let it cool down and continue to do that until you get to that 20 shots. And then you can put all those shots together and you're getting your um, dispersion that way, which did make sense. Okay, so what's the point of this podcast? I just wanna talk about group size. I think it's pretty interesting. This is coming from the perspective of a hunter who's shooting a rifle, he's probably reloaded those components into that load and is wanting to see what kind of group it gets. So let's just start from the beginning and let's talk about things that we know. First of all, we know that one shot doesn't tell you the whole story. You have to shoot a group to see how consistent that it's gonna be. It's, it's more about consistency than anything else. If you, if all things being equal, you shoot and time and time again, it's hitting the same spot or very close to the same spot, then your whole system and your whole load is consistent. And therefore that's what you want, right? It's a tight group. It means you can fire multiple times and you feel confident it's gonna perform the same way. Here's something else we all know you don't go hunting with a clean bore. Maybe people do, I've been taught to not do that. Because as a gun gets shot with more and more rounds and not being cleaned, it will change things in there. Of course, carbon and copper is deposited in that barrel, in the riflings and everywhere else. And so the interior of that barrel, you know, the condition of the barrel is changing but no bigger difference. So from, from shot five to 10, there's a big difference. From shot, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 to 30, there's a big difference. From shot 
50 to 100, there's a big difference, but there's probably no bigger difference than from a clean bore to shot one. That's a big difference. There was relatively, I say that because there's no such thing as getting everything out, but almost, you know, relatively speaking, almost all the carbon and all the coppers out and you have an extremely clean barrel. And then after shot one, it's fouled, right? And so we always shoot a fouling shot and then we shoot for groups or we, before we go hunting, we shoot a few groups, make sure the scope's still sighted in and then go hunting. You do that for a few reasons. One, you want to make sure that your scope is still pointing in the right direction. But also you know that that first shot is, is going to be going through a barrel that's in a different condition than what you probably will be in the field. And even if you did go to the field and hunted with a clean barrel, say you missed that first shot or you need a follow-up shot, it could be off a decent amount. So we all know that there's a fouling shot, right? Just make sure the barrel is fouled. And at some point, some people talk about a copper equilibrium where the copper deposit is at a point where it's very consistent and balanced and it's going to stay that way for quite a long time until it becomes just over fouled and needs cleaned. And so some people will want to shoot 10, 20, 30 shots before they really start shooting for their best groups. But everybody's different. I know in F class and bench rest, they clean, clean, clean. They always start out with a clean bore because they want to take out any variables. And if they always start at the same place, then they know it's, that's one more variable taken out. So this happens to me, and I'm sure it's happened to you, where you got your load, you're at the range, you're trying to make sure you're, you're doing your part and shooting good, and your first two rounds are good. Maybe they're touching, maybe they're half an inch apart, but you feel pretty confident. And that third shot is an inch off or it's a half inch off from those two. And you're like, dang it. <laughs> And it makes you want to just shot a two shot group, shoot a two shot group and leave it at that because it was so good. But usually when you go to that third one, you mess it up. Or if you're shooting a five shot group, you know, three and four, pretty good. But then that last shot always is a flyer and it always screws up your group size. So from one perspective, you could say, well, that's just the dispersion that they're talking about. And the more you shoot, the bigger your, dis your dispersion is which is not wrong. They're, they're correct on that. Therefore, you don't have a quarter minute angle rifle like you think you have. Maybe you have a two inch minute of angle rifle. But here's what we need to think about. There's a big difference. So let's say I shot a bullet and then I waited for 10 full minutes. And then I shot another bullet, waited 10 minutes, let the barrel cool down 100%, then shot a third bullet, and I called that my, th my three shot group. Versus, bam, load up the next one, bam, load up the next one, bam. More than likely, the group that you waited and let the barrel cool down each time is gonna be tighter than that three shot group where you just bam, bam, bam. Because as the barrel heats up, things change. We're talking in a microscopic way, but the barrel changes and it could affect, not could, it will affect how it shoots. Um, I don't know all the science behind that, but I just know it heats up. It could expand or contract slightly, probably expand. If it's getting hot, it's gonna expand slightly. It's just gonna affect the physics of the inside of your barrel. It's just, it's gonna happen which in turn could affect the node and the vibration and all that and the, and the harmonics. And therefore it just is going to come out and hit a different spot. Okay. That's just, it's just going to happen. So it makes me just think about when we shot a three, when we shoot a three shot group, like what are we thinking about? Are we thinking, this is truly how accurate my gun is. Or are we thinking this is how consistent and accurate my rifle is in hunting conditions? 
You know, say I shoot at an animal, miss it, have to cycle the bolt, shoot again, miss it again, finally hit it the third shot. Or I hit it the first time, but I didn't make a good shot and it's still standing there and I need to put it down as soon as possible, so I put a couple more rounds through it. That's hunting conditions. And that's technically different than a three shot group for accuracy. There is no question that whether you're shooting a hundred shot group and you're letting it cool down every time, or whether you're shooting a hundred rounds as fast as possible, there will be dispersion, right? And the more shots that you take, the bigger the dispersion will get. I don't think anybody would question that. That is going to happen. But I would say for sure, the hundred shots that you let cool down would be a tighter group than the hundred shots you fired consecutively. Consecutively, it's really about repeatability. That's really all that matters. And that Hornady ballistician said that. He basically said, "Look, if if you're changing the seating depth and it does affect accuracy, <clears throat> I'm not disputing that. We're not disputing that. But make sure." You can do it again and again and again, and it repeats itself. And he said, look, if, it, if what you're doing is repeatable, I'm, I agree with it. But, is it. but if it's not repeatable, then it's not science. So really, I agree with everything Eric Cortana said, and I agree with everything the Hornady Ballistician said, because I, I see valid points in, in all that they said. What it really comes down to is repeatability. You know, I'm as guilty as anyone because components are so hard to find and it's so expensive that as soon as I get that tight group, I'm done. <laughs> I make a video and I show you guys how I worked up a load and I stopped right when it got to that tightest group and it had the um, standard deviation and, ex and extreme spread that I wanted and the velocity I wanted. And I say, check mark, done, completed make the video brag on the rifle, but I never went back and shot another group and another group and another group and another group in the same conditions to make sure it was repeatable. So I do agree with what, what, with what the guy was saying, but here's something I, I wanted to throw out there. And I don't think they really got into it. You know, so their point is don't go by what a three shot group, is telling you or a five shot group is telling you unless it's repeatable but go with what the bigger shot groups are telling you because that's a more accurate um, example of the dispersion okay and I get that and I agree but in a hunting scenario really the thing that's important is the first shot you know if you think about it a three shot group is really only telling you how consistent and accurate your group will be if you have to take follow-up shots. That is important to know for sure. And I think it's a great way to test the accuracy of your load. So don't, don't misunderstand me, but really it's the first shot. And so I'm not going to change what I'm doing. I'm going to continue to shoot three and five shot groups because it's fun and it does give you some data, but maybe it's more important to just get your scope sighted in to where it's supposed to hit bullseye and on your first shot, not a fouling shot, but on your first shot, does it hit the bullseye or how close to that bullseye is it hitting? And then let it completely cool down in the same conditions and do it again. And how close to that bullseye are you getting? That's really what's more important. So really your first shot, hitting the same spot where your scope is aiming every time is more important than shooting any group. Therefore, when you shoot those first two shots and they're really good, but then you shoot that third shot and it's a flyer, I wouldn't worry about it if you're talking about hunting. Because first of all, what's happening is it's not the load, it's the gun, right? What happened is you shot the first shot, the second shot. Well, by the third shot, your barrel is heating up and things have changed. Things have changed inside that barrel. And the third shot is a reflection of the barrel heating up. It's a reflection of the rifle. That's why if you get a giant bull barrel 
um, it's usually not going to start throwing those flyers as quickly because the heat doesn't affect it in the same way as a pencil barrel, you know, a real thin barrel. So those flyers happening at shot three or five is really more of a testament of the rifle and the barrel than it is the load. Now, if you're F-class and you're shooting 10 shot groups, this doesn't apply to you. What I'm saying means nothing. But I think most people watching this channel are hunters. And if your first two shots are right on and it's always that third shot, it's probably your rifle barrel is pretty thin and he's heating up and is throwing a flyer. But if you're doing your job and you're killing that animal on the first shot, maybe the second shot, it's never gonna come into play. So even though I agree with everything Eric and Hornady said, I'm gonna go the reverse and say a two shot group is valid. <laughs> Forget about a hundred shot group. I think a two shot group is valid, but in reality, shooting no groups at all is valid. If every time you shoot, it hits the bullseye, that's what's most important. And once again, I'm not talking about a fouling shot. The, the gun is, is fouled and it's in the type of condition, the same condition it's gonna be when you are hunting and you've got your scope sighted in and you're hitting bullseye every time we're very close to bullseye on the first shot, that's what's important. And then is that repeatable? Can I wait 15 minutes and let that barrel 100% cool down and do it again? 100% cool down, do it again. It's repeatable. So I'm here to tell you a one shot group works. <laughs> a one shot group works. The only thing would be is how, like you might say, well, what if I miss and I end up shooting three or five times, then yeah, you need to shoot a three or, sh or five shot group and see how your, how your gun is going to react to heating up. But hopefully we're not shooting three or five shots at our game animal. Then of course I'll end this by saying it also depends on what you're firing at. If you're going after a deer or an elk, you're more than likely going to be hunting for one animal. So if you're hunting hogs, you know, and the, and the landowner or whoever says, Hey, I want you to kill as many hogs as possible. Then you might want to know how your gun is going to operate. Um, when it's, when the barrel's very hot or if you're prairie dog hunting, obviously you might want to know how tight of a group you're, you're going to get, um, in a 20 shot group. And how big is the dispersion going to be in a 20 shot group? Cause you know, your barrel's going to be smoking hot. So there are times in hunting where you would want to know, but for the most part, it's that first shot. And I'm here to tell you, if you shoot two good ones, and that third shot is off and your barrel is a thin barrel, I wouldn't worry about it. I think you're in good shape. Check the link in the description below for all kinds of cool stuff. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. More videos like this will be coming. Give it a thumbs up. Please comment. I'd love to know what you have to say. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, enjoyed talking about this topic with you, drinking coffee. Hope you have a great day and until next time, take care.